Hi, this is Jerry Castro, your host for the Carib Scene Show, and you're watching CAF TV, and we're here live at the St. Kitts and Nevis Gala Independence Day in the heart of Houston, heart of the Caribbean paradise in the state of Texas, and we're back to you guys. Hi, good evening everyone. This is Jerry Castro, your host for the Carib Scene Show, brought to you by CAF TV and your local Telemundo Channel 47 here in Houston, to which we're taping for our second season here. And I want to take this time to thank you for taking a moment right now and spending time with us. Well, what you're seeing here is you're seeing, you're seeing the beginning of an event that's about to take place. St. Kitts St. Nevis is, is hosting and celebrating their Independence Day today the 28th anniversary here in the city of Houston, 1983, September 19th. Who can forget that day when our fellow island from St. Kitts and Nevis got the independence from Great Britain. Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be around, we're going to be speaking with everyone here, all of the celebrities, all of the members of the galas, keynote speakers, and you're going to get a taste of what St. Kitts a Nevis is all about right here on CAF TV, brought to you by, right here, as a matter of fact, on the Carib Scene Show, brought to you by CAF TV. And we're back to you guys up in the studio. <laughs> We're back here again at the St. Kitts and Nevis uh, Independence Gala in the heart of Houston. And with me, I have my co-host, Ana Valenzuela, the darling, uh, La Muchacha del Barrio. Move over, J-Lo, because we have one already. <laughs> Anita, um, you know, this is one of the events that makes Houston stand out in the United States and, of course, representing the Caribbean. You know, how do you feel about being in here and just... You know, with this week and this this month being an independence celebratory, you know, what else could go wrong? I do, you are correct, Jerry. It is amazing. It is outstanding how much celebration and especially diversity we're, we have here um, in the heart of Houston. Once again, that's what makes us different. So, excellent. Well, if you have not found out yet, you know, St. Kitts and Nevis is celebrating 28 years uh, of independence from Great Britain. This is one of the youngest islands 
to one of the youngest countries in the hemisphere to celebrate Independence Day, and you know you you can see it here. You can see the pride of the Caribbean. You can you can see you can feel the pride of St. Kitts. You can feel the pride of Latin America, which of course we have a bunch of Latin American countries this time around who are doing the same thing. Of course, and you know to mention some of them, we have just celebrated the Mexican Independence Day, also Costa Rica, Honduras. So. Not only the Caribbean is proud and you can feel that diversity here in Houston, but you also have Latin America bringing their culture, bringing their proudness, bringing everything that consolidates us, Hispanics and Latins. Well, Hispanics and Latins in here in Houston, today it's all about St. Kitts and Nevis, and we're going to be seeing some of the finest women in here. Of course, Anna is one of them. And of course, our president who was here. But before we go on, I want to send a big shout out to our chairman of the board, Peter Lynn Rene, who is behind the cameras doing what he does best. And our president, and of course, the board of directors who day in, day in and day out, you know, keep up and doing these things here by bringing you guys this information in, you know, to all of the countries, to all of the Latinos out there, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Cuba, ya tu sabes, estamos aquí para ustedes. Entre medio de la independencia de St. Kitts and Nevis. Excellent, 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 excellent job. And just continue, continue working hard to bring our countries alive, to bring our culture, and to continue to bring the diversity to the Houston and the United States as well. Well, before we go on to the next segment, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I feel like I'm the luckiest human being on the planet, you know, having two of the finest ladies here in the heart of St. Kitts and Nevis. Only in St. Kitts and Nevis could this happen, you know. Having a young man from Livingston with the two of the finest ones. Our president is here, our co-host is here. But we'll be right back with you guys so we could bring you some of the best of what this country has to offer and a little bit of history with all of the celebrities that are here so that, you know, we can share a little bit of what's happening at the St. Kitts and Nevis Independence Gala happening in the heart of Houston, Texas. And back to you guys. Well, we did say that this was going to be all about St. Kitts and Nevis, okay? So if you're not here, you don't know what you're missing because this is the event of the month. This is the event of the decade. This is the, the event of the town, the main event in the house. Somebody said that uh, Floyd Mayweather and uh, some guy are fighting tonight. No, you guys need to be here to enjoy some of the finest thing that's happening here at the St. Kitts and Nevis Independence Gala. How do you feel about uh, this event? And first of all, if you can share with us your name and uh, briefly tell us a little bit about the organization. Uh, we have seen St. Kitts and Nevis organization all over, Carrie Fest, all of these events and all that good stuff. So just briefly tell us, you know, how is it going and, you know, the organization and some of the things you guys are doing to uplift the St. Kitts and Nevis community here in the city of Houston. Good evening. Uh, my name is Denise Patrick. I'm the vice president of SCANA. SCANA stands for St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston. And tonight is a very proud moment for us in history. The group started in 2008 and we've had some struggles, but tonight is our first independence dinner and dance and we are very proud. We are hoping as the months and the years go by, we'll be able to make a greater impact in Houston. We haven't had a very strong presence, so we are hoping by showing the community tonight that we are alive and well here in Houston, we can spread the culture and the heritage of St. Kitts. Um, some of the upcoming events that we have, our ambassador, the ambassador to the United States, Miss Jacin Penley Martin, she's supposed to be visiting us later in the fall. That's going to be a big event. We're hoping to have the mayor of Houston along with other dignitaries there. Um, I would just like to encourage uh, anyone out there from the Twin Island Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis to just give us a call. It's a wonderful organization. Uh, this is going to be a great year and we are looking forward to working with all the other Caribbean groups. Well, well, I couldn't have said it better. She said alive and well. How can we get in touch with the organization? Is there a website, a number that we can, you know, if I want to go and be part of St. Kitts because I love the culture and every time when St. Kitts come out, there's always a crowd and these guys always make us feel good. 
Well, the easiest way to find us right now is our, on our Facebook page, and it's the St. Kitts Nevis Houston Association. All of the information is on Facebook. You can post the message, and we'll definitely make sure that we contact you. My number, 832-654-9686, and we'll do whatever we need to do to make sure that you get involved. Well, you guys have heard it. You guys need to get in touch with the organization of St. Kitts, St. Nevis, so that you, know, you can get involved in what's happening here. Again, this is the main event of Houston. This is the main event of Texas. This is the main event in the Caribbean, in the United States. And you need to be here to celebrate with the entire Caribbean community and the entire Latin community, the St. Kitts, St. Nevis Gala Independence here taking place in the heart of Houston. Well, thank you very much, Denise. And what we'll do is we'll get back to you guys up in the studio and we'll be coming back, you know, with more here from the gala that has taken all over the city of Houston and Texas. promise that this is going to it's just the beginning okay and we already we are seeing some of the stars some of the celebrities some of the dignitaries and we have one of them here right now mr Auric warner the keynote speaker for the night sir how are you doing and just tell us briefly about how do you feel about being in this tremendous event tonight very good um but by the way thank you and it's really great being here actually i graduated from the university of houston so this is somewhat of a homecoming for me and to see all these people is really beautiful. You know? you know, given that this is the first time that we are celebrating the St. Kitts Independence Gala here in the city of Houston after 28 years, how does that make you feel, you know, uh, by having a home away from home and by seeing all these great people up here? I think it's great because I think it's important that we maintain our heritage and celebrate our successes. And 28 years certainly is something to celebrate and hopefully we'll be doing it many more times. And it's a first, but certainly it's a start and hopefully we'll continue on that vein and do it many more times. And that is one of the very important things. Thank you so much for being here with us. Let me ask you something. You've seen the heat and the, the, the greatness of the people gathering here. How do you compare that to back home? Tell wow, me I tell you what, the guys here have a lot of energy and they're so beautiful and well dressed. And I gotta tell you, when I left Houston in 1984, I would have been happy to see a crowd like this, honestly. And the energy, and to have you guys here, this is a testimony to how far we've come. So I love it. You know, my grandfather would say that it's a maturity to showcase a maturity of a community, exactly. and certainly not only the Caribbean community, but St. Kitts is showing that maturity. Mr. Mr. Warner, thank you very much. And I know you have to go because you're going to get to do the keynote speech for the night. Uh, any last words, any message that you want to send the St. Kitts and Nevis community back home in the island? I think that I just want to let them know that the culture, the people, the spirit of St. Kitts Nevis is alive and well in Houston, Texas. Well, this is the second time we've heard this, this, this word, alive and well. Ain't no other island that brings alive and well and give it a meaning than St. Kitts and Nevis. And back to you guys up in the studio. Well, somebody says that there were an Oscars taking place in L.A., that there were some awards taking place in New York. Ain't nothing compared to what's happening here in the heart of Houston with the St. Kitts and Nevis uh, Gala Independence Celebration, the first annual one celebrating 28 years here in the heart of Texas. And we're here with the president of the association, Novita. How are you doing? Looking wonderful as usual. And that smile is just sending some rays all the way back home. Tell us briefly, how do you feel about being in here today? And just tell us, you know, how St. Kitts is doing in the city of Houston, because I see them all over, you know, Carrie Fest, all of the festivals and all that stuff. And thank you guys for coming out for the American, Caribbean American Heritage 
celebration in June. You know, just briefly tell us about the organization and what does Independence Day mean to the Caribbean community here in the city of Houston from St. Kitts. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for being so gracious with your introduction. Well, the independence of St. Kitts Nevis from Great Britain means a lot to our community. It is a wonderful tribute to the hard work that many people have put in to making us free, not free from anything that's bad, but free to be people amongst ourselves and to be able to have our own destiny. That's what it really means to us. And we're very, very pleased and very thrilled to be here tonight to celebrate with all of our people from St. Kitts Nevis and from other islands who are here visiting with us. So we're very excited to be here. Thank you. So what you're saying is that this event is not just only a St. Kitts event. It is an international phenomenon that you guys have started off here in the city of Houston. Yes, we have. Actually, this is meant to be a St. Kitts Nevis independence event. However, St. Kitts Nevis um, has an awful lot of people from different islands living within the St. Kitts Nevis um, Twin Federation. So here in Houston, we are part of all of the communities, all of the Caribbean communities, and we have friends across the atmosphere for everything that we do. So people are out here celebrating with us tonight. People from Jamaica, St. Lucia, the Dominican Republic, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, and many other Caribbean islands are out tonight. Well, definitely representing our Caribbean heritage. It's a pleasure to be here. This is beautiful, and I'm very happy to be part of the celebration of the 28th year of St. Kitts and Nevis. Let me ask you something. Within the organization, uh, what are some of the other activities that you'll do throughout the years that we might be able to incorporate to? Yes, um, one of the um, other events that we're working on right now is starting on our scholarship program where we're working to raise funds so that we can give two deserving students um, from the St. Kitts Nevis um, family um, opportunities to go on to higher learning. Other opportunities that we have within our organization, we do volunteerism, we go out, we feed the hungry, we take care of the homeless, we give them um, samples of um, cleaning agents, things that they can use, and we also go out um, and we help with the Thanksgiving Day dinners over at the George R. Brown Convention Center. Excellent job, and we'll be looking forward for, to support all of the activities that the um, St. Keys and Nevis uh, organization has, uh, does, and we'll be looking forward to support those students especially that will be representing the Caribbean in higher education. Well, you guys have heard it, you know, what's going on in here, it's much more bigger than the Oscars in Los Angeles, it's much more bigger than what's happening in Madison Square Garden, it's much more bigger than what's happening all around the world. St. Kitts and Nevis is the talk of town, and you need to be here this year, next year, and the years to follow, because what they're doing is not just about the island, but it's about the humanity. And we're back to you guys up in the studio. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Melvina Chapman O'Dane, and I am the president of the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston. Thank you all for being here tonight. I'd like to say a few, just a, a little bit of a welcome to everyone. We were so blessed today to have some rain. Yes. <laughs> We're going to get started in just a few minutes, but for the moment, I'd like to take a moment and tell everyone how pleased, absolutely delighted that I am to see you all here tonight. Thank you for supporting our organization. We're very new, we're very young, and we're hoping that with your help and blessings from above, that our organization will be successful and all that it can be. Our organization was started with the vision of a young woman by the name of Coretta Warner and her friends, Michelle Burt, Kimberly Burt, and a few other friends of hers. These are young ladies that were born in the United States of St. Kitts and Nevis heritage, and they wanted to learn more about their heritage. And they decided that they were gonna start an organization that, could, that they could embrace and that they could learn as much as they possibly could from. Ladies, tonight I salute you I thank you for your vision, 
as young as you are, I thank you all for even coming up with this wonderful idea. Thank you. There are two of those young ladies in the audience tonight, and I would like them to stand so that everybody can see who Coretta Warner and Michelle Burt. There's Michelle right here at the front. Thank you, ladies. They turned it over to the oldies and goodies to um, try to run the organization, and we're going to do our best to make them proud. Right now, I would like to introduce to you um, your committee members for the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston. And when I say your names, if you will please stand. I would like to introduce our vice president, my right-hand person, who without her, I could not have done any of this, or without anybody, but especially with our vice president, Denise Patrick. The lady that we're going to entrust all of our money to is Miss Avis Walwyn Chambers. The secretary of our organization is Mrs. Merlet Williams. and the delightful Coretta Warner, who is responsible for the wonderful um, programs that you see on the table tonight with her talent itself, is our PR and marketing person with the organization. <laughs> Two very, very important people within the organization are the membership and recruitment staff. They are Dennis Warner Sr. and Mr. Winston Burt. In every, in every organization, there must be someone that liaises with the community in general. That person tonight that we have selected to um, take on those duties is Ms. Sharon Hodge. And no organization would be complete without somebody that handles culture and entertainment. And that is the one and only Ipa Hodge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is our committee members. Those are our committee members. Um, when you meet them, please give them words of encouragement give them um, wisdom, and help us along the way so that you, we can make all of you in the room tonight and those that are not here proud of us. Right now, I would like to introduce to you Merlette Williams, who will uh, do our invocation. Will you please bow for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather to celebrate the independence of our homeland. We ask for your blessings on St. Kitts Nevis. Grant wisdom and understanding to our leaders so they may guide our nation to peace and prosperity. Please grant favor to this our adopted country. Let us live lives that bring glory to you and honor to our native land. Bless this fellowship. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys are terrific. Okay. Seriously. Okay, thank you. I prepared some remarks, but I'm going to be a little bit briefer than I intended on being, but that's okay. I'll get you to the meet. Um, let me begin by giving you a brief overview on myself. This is not about me, but I think it's important that I establish a little bit of where I came from and who I am. I tell people in Cincinnati I'm a little boy from Sandy Point, St. Kitts, St. Kitts and Nevis, and damned proud of it. I say that because there are those of us who think that they're from bigger places. 
I once heard a very famous gentleman from the Caribbean, Colin Powell. He thinks he's not from the Caribbean, I think so. <laughs> he was born in Brooklyn, I think, right? But that's okay, he's from the Caribbean. <laughs> he said, we are all from a small place. Now, where we go with it is a different story. We should all move to a bigger place, and that's what I try to do with my life. And I want to give that type of inspiration to all of you. When Dennis called me and asked me to be the keynote speaker at this event, one of the things that he wanted me to do was to provide some inspiration. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm a technical guy. I'm an engineer. What do I know about inspiring people? He said, listen, man, when you were here, you did some things that we thought were crazy. How did you, as a guy from St. Kitts, a guy from Sandy Point, a guy from Downing Street, right, who lived by the cemetery, how did you lead these Trinidadians and Jamaicans to run the Caribbean Student Association at the University of Houston? What got into your head to write this newsletter called the Caribbean Times of Houston? And I thought, well, let me think about it. And he further said, Alright, listen man, we really want you to come because you did something that people don't know about. You're the guy that started the Houston Caribbean Carnival. And I spoke to my wife. She said, I heard, I heard you guys talking. So you're going to be in New York Labor Day weekend, then you're going to be in Chicago, and you're going to be in Houston, three weekends in a row. Honey, yes. Which is why I ask you guys to stand, these spouses. I mean, it's really serious business when I say this. I'm very serious. Big up your spouses, your significant others, because they have to put up with you when you volunteer. How many of you get paid for this? Mel, are you being paid for this? Huh? Now, I understand from Denise that she got paid. Is that true? <laughs> okay, obviously not, right? So, that's what I'm saying, guys. Big up the spouses, the significant others, because you put up with stuff. Okay? Um, so, I have some connections with Houston. I shared some of those. I graduated from the University of Houston. I don't know how I graduated, given all the things I was into. <laughs> but I graduated, did very well, and went on to Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati. And um, I just quickly say that what I learned from working with these groups in Houston really inspired me to do a lot of the things that I have done at Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati, in Germany on two occasions, and three years in Japan. So those of you, such as the young lady, Mrs. Coretta Warner, and the others involved, Mel, Denise, Dennis, and others, you know, let the young people see you doing this. Let them realize that when they participate in organizations such as this, that it's really a training ground for bigger and indeed better things. I don't know if you heard me with that. Somebody should have said amen. <laughs> okay. Um, for those of you who don't know what are some of these, these things I did, I quickly share a few of some of my successes at Procter & Gamble. By the way, Procter & Gamble is that small, tiny company that you probably may have heard about in Cincinnati that has some global operations in every single country in the world, probably, and sells you everything that they can, from bar soaps to soap powders to shaving creams and shaving blades and always sanitary napkins, bounty kitchen towels, Charmin toilet paper and Pampers. Have any of you ever heard of any of those products? <laughs> okay. Um, I worked on Bounty in the early 90s. And I, but first I'll tell you a story about when I first joined Procter & Gamble. So my wife and I, we moved up to Cincinnati. 
And I called my parents and told them, yeah, I got this job with P&G. And I told her, well, she asked me, so what product are you working on? And I hesitated. I said, I'm working on Always. <laughs> now, this is a Caribbean woman living in London with this wonderful British accent. She says, boy, what you say? You're the guy that don't want to go to the store to buy these products and you're working on all this. But I did it. And I, I anyway, I'm not going to go into some of this stuff. But then my fun time came and I worked on Bounty um, and learned a lot about paper making and that sort of thing and made it softer, stronger, and better. And I'm, I'm telling you that folks were as bad as my Trinidadian and Jamaica. By the way, are there anybody here from Trinidad and Jamaica? I don't want you. Good. I love you guys. So let me tell you something here, okay? <laughs> in these meetings, when we were planning all of these events, and they were very stretching, um, there were always folks who thought that we shouldn't do something, or we should do this. And I'll tell you, listen, as leaders, I'm speaking to all of you, you've got to have a vision for what you want to do, and be really convicted by that vision. But to be convicted, you've got to really think hard about things. Think about the pros and cons of what you're going to do and align people with your positions. That's something I learned right here in Houston. Okay? And folks from the Caribbean are very serious, more serious, and honestly, when you get down to it, non-political, they, they do things for very good reasons. I can't always set up for some of my colleagues who have all kinds of isms and schisms in their head. Sometimes I don't know where the heck they get these ideas from. <laughs> But folks are very strong in Houston. We agreed, listen, we have a very strong, vibrant Caribbean community, and we should do something to really make us feel like who we are, strong, rich in thought, rich in mind, intellectually excellent, and have no apologies about that. And guess what? We have a culture, we have great music, great food, so let's show it off. The first carnival that we had was in 1983. We started discussing it in 1982. I was the president, and I said, guys, are you sure you want to do this? Because here's what it's going to entail. And folks says, oh, we got to sell tickets. We got I said, yeah. We have to advertise? Yes. And we got a team together in 82. Dennis was part of it. Where's Dennis? Where we started planning and executing and thinking, how are we going to do this? How are we going to advertise this? What's our audience? In Procter & Gamble, you say, who is the who? And what's the what? In 1982, we executed the first one in 1983. And I can tell you, we did it at the University of Houston. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And this is why you've got to form teams, right? And know what you're about. We did this with excellence. We even had a queen show with islands represented. I've never seen such beautiful women in my life. Right? The Queen show was brilliant. We had somebody from St. Kitts, of course, who participated, and she did this masquerade dance. And some of my American friends were saying, what? You had Indians in St. Kitts and the Caribbean? <laughs> yes, we did. Columbus did not discover the Caribbean, despite what you might think. OK? When Columbus came, he saw these beautiful Indian people. The Caribs were not exactly the most friendly. And the Araraks, they were the most beautiful, friendly, docile people. But they were not about to give up their land and get enslaved in the process. And the Carib says, move over. We're going to have to fight on this. So the Caribbean eventually changed. The guns came. These peaceful guys with their Bibles came along and shot and raped and plundered and killed many of the original inhabitants. The British came and took over our islands. And one of the good things that the British did was focus on education. And I want to spend a few seconds talking on this, OK? I know I'm between you and some walking up here, but <laughs> give me a, let me say a few words on this, because this is one of the reasons why I think I am the person who I've become. The British insisted on education. 
And I'm involved in another organization called the Sandy Point Benevolent Society, SPBS. We are headquartered, incorporated in New York City. And one of the things that we focus on steadfastly, and I ask your organizations to join us in, in this endeavor in your can, is to really give back to St. Kitts and Nevis in the form of encouraging, supporting education, the young people and the teachers involved in this process. Education is simply foundational to anything and everything we hope to achieve in St. Kitts, in Nevis, in Sandy Point, in Houston, everywhere. And the great Calypsonian Spiral song, a song that said what? Education, edu you know that song, right? It's fundamental. And so we can't fault the British for teaching us and encouraging us on education. It's fundamental. Now I tell people that St. Kitts and Nevis, we have achieved our, more than our fair share of successes. In New York recently, I learned that there are at least five neurosurgeons from St. Kitts. One of them is the daughter of the Prime Minister, I think. Some of you may know this. But this is incredible. At Procter & Gamble, this is a global company. We have 50 research fellows, 5-0, throughout the, the, the company, of 125,000 employees. One of them is from St. Kitts. Can you believe that? That's me, in case you don't realize that. <laughs> um, but I can go on. There are a number of great people from St. Kitts. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read that stuff. Uh, maybe later on you can get it from the vice president or president. But there's some great people from St. Kitts. Have you ever heard about Tim Collins? Yes. Okay, what did Tim just do and three other guys from St. Kitts? They won the bronze, right, in the... Four by 100. All right? Who won gold? Now, why do you Jamaica man? Come on, man. Yeah. Jamaica won gold. Who won silver? Huh? No, no, Trinidad? Was it, was it US, right? I know that our friends from Britain fumbled and lost their stick so they didn't place. But St. Kitts, that bronze. Now the population of St. Kitts, for those of you who may have forgotten your geography or whatever, it's combined, right? On a nice dry day, it's probably 45,000. All right? So that's what I'm saying. We have a legacy, frankly, in St. Kitts and Nevis. Well, I'm talking there. We have more abroad than we have there. Right? Which brings me to the point that actually, it, you know, petitions and divisions, we have a legacy to uphold. I mean, honestly. I mean, you, look at you. This is a beautiful group. Right? And you guys are full of, thank you, such beautiful people, and I'm sure mentally, intellectually, and otherwise, all right, besides your beautiful physical appearances and lovely, some, some of us clean up nicely, huh? Wow. Um, but seriously, our students excel. And I think in the last CXC and for the last couple of years, St. Kitts is ranked, St. Kitts Nevis, is ranked very highly on the CXC results. I think Barbados may be the only country that I think has beaten us, but it's still very close. Interesting tone, yeah? <laughs> Um, so my push for you really is to support education, support folks back home, and I'm going to share a couple of top line thoughts that I have on a couple of topics. I call it the LDP, Leadership, Discipline, the D. And guess what the last one is? Perseverance. I spoke at the Sandy Point High School's um, graduation on perseverance. And a couple of students wanted me to come back and talk about perseverance. I'll say a few words on that. But let me talk about leadership quickly. And I'll do it in about 10 minutes, right? Yes, the whole thing. Leadership, number one, you've got to have a vision. If you want to be a leader, you've got to stop and think. 
What do I want to achieve? What are my goals? What are our goals? And you can't be selfish. You have to give of yourself. I lead a team in our Pampers organization, and I got to think unselfishly. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about, I can't just think of North America. I got to think about Japan, what's happening in China. Can you imagine some of my colleagues want to put characters from Sesame Street on diapers in China? Now, what do Chinese know about Sesame Street? Nothing. So why do it? OK? So as a leader, I've got to say, guys, this doesn't make sense. In Germany, when they eat, before they eat, they say bon appetit. Some of you are more sophisticated guys in this room. You say bon appetit. In Germany, what do they say? Guten Appetit. But we want to put Bon Appetit on the German kitchen towels. I said, no. That is wrong. These are Germans. And if you know anything about World War I and II, those Germans love Germany more than anything else. And they love their language. So I took the leaders, guys, Guten Appetit, please. By the way, I tried to learn languages enough to get me in trouble. And that's another thing. As a leader, you've got to learn. I hear silence. You have to learn. You've got to continually sharpen your blade. There's somebody behind you who wants your job. <laughs> There's somebody behind you who, I hate to say it, guys, don't want to see you succeed. Right? But you've got to succeed. You've got a job to do. You people believe. Right? So you've got to have a vision. Now, here's the piece that I like about Miss Warner. Where is Pretty Kitchen? Is she in the house? Coretta, because she's not here. Take this one, take notes on this one. As a leader, you've got to communicate. There are about 23 ways that you can communicate your organizing visions, your plans. You heard of text messages, you heard of flyers, you heard of Facebook, emails, web pages. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Right? Use it, communicate. Unless people understand what you're doing, they won't follow you. It's that simple. We are in a world where we are bombarded with all kinds of media information. You gotta get through the clutter and get your message out very clearly, very crisply. Leadership, it's so important. Okay, discipline. Once you've got your vision down pat, once you've got your plan down pat, you gotta be disciplined in executing. Remember, in 2008, Mr. Obama simply out-disciplined the other guy. What was his name again? <laughs> Who was going all over the bush areas, talking all kinds of nonsense. Again, this is not politics. It's just simple, a fact of life. You've got to be disciplined. If you've got to have an event, you've got to advertise. So don't distract your PR role with nonsense. If you've got to be here at 5 o'clock, then be here at 5 o'clock. Shower, get your stuff done. If you have to lose 200 pounds or whatever, do it. It's part of discipline. All right? I have young engineers sometimes who think they can use the American Express card and not file expense reports. Well, what happened when you pay your bills? Well, I don't care who you are. You've got to do it. And your, and your Amex card gets canceled or blocked. Uh, Mr. Warner, can you buy my ticket? No. You've got, next, you've got your own car. Get it done. It's simple. So we have to be a little bit more disciplined. Now back home, when we're doing our exams and GCEs and that sort of thing, you've got to study. You've got to do your homework. Okay? That's that. Um, the next one is perseverance. Success. Success is not given to us. We have to earn it. It's as simple as that. You have to earn it, which means you got to show leadership, of course. You got to have discipline, but you really got to go off and learn what does it take to go from point A to point B. What's the gap? What do I need to learn? What do I need to do? Who do I need to convince? Just figure it out, and get done. Work hard. Sometimes I up till two a.m. in the morning, learning something new, doing something different, figuring out. Okay, what's in the day? And these guys didn't get it. I'm not gonna blame somebody and claim racism. That's nonsense. Over that, look into yourself. 
And don't make big thing fail or you could not done something wrong sometimes. I know I'm not perfect, so I gotta go back and say, okay, what did I do wrong? What can I do better? And come back to the plan. This is perseverance. Don't give up. If you believe in something well enough, strong enough, you won't give up. You won't give up on it. We had a what we in New York this past Labor Day weekend. Do you mind that we would have a wonderful fundraising dinner to honor petitions and divisions? Particular folks from Sandy Point. This is for the Sandy Point Benevolent Society. Let me let me be clear. And I was chairman about five and I proposed this idea, and nobody wanted to hear about it. When I proposed it in 1982, people were violently opposed to it. Okay, we didn't fight, but I had the looks. My one Jamaican friend, Noel Clark, he was our treasurer. By the way, is Noel still in Houston? I hope he's really good. Well thought, boy, Alric, I think we're biting off too much, you know, man. Boy, that's a lot of money. But he said, you can make a lot of money. Okay, I pushed, I persevered, I found all kind of angles, and I remembered something that my aunt once told me. And you know what she said? A whole heap of nothing is still less than a little bit of something. Said another way, a little bit of something is a whole lot better and more than a whole heap of nothing. Sometimes you've got to compromise to get what you want. And when that door slides open, man, you jump in and open it wider. Okay? That's perseverance and discipline. Okay? Keep your goal in mind. And sometimes we tend to forget that. Keep that goal in mind. Keep your eyes on the prize and go for it. Sometimes you have to be patient. And I waited three years for our event in New York. And I got to tell you if, you, if you weren't there, you, you missed something. It was really fantastic. What you guys have done tonight, honestly, I think this is great. Look at where you are. What if you had done nothing? Right? I wouldn't be here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. OK? Sometimes you have to give up. I was very happy when you said that young lady, um, uh, Miss Coretta Warner, gave up the presidency in order to, or whatever, she gave it up. She was one of the instigators. Well, I gave up the chairmanship of our organization because I wanted to work to really see this event happen. And I'm very happy, and I worked my tail off to do it. It was not because of me. To be honest with you, I love to see the kids back home being served. Because in the end, I can go back home if and when I retire and be safe. And for me, this is what it's all about, having a safe St. Kitts and Nevis. Listen to the news. <laughs> These kids are simply misguided. And I'll pick on my Sandy Point folks here. Recently, some of you, not you, but some of us held up a group of, of, of uh, tourists. Now, honestly, when we were growing up, would that ever happen? I can't hear you. No. Exactly. And I think it's because the kids just don't have any vision. They don't have any jobs. Now, the economy of St. Kitts and Davis and the whole globe is really tough. And so government is really just not being able to do it. Which for me is another reason why I want to see young people coming up with ideas and showing these politicians on both sides. I'm not picking on NRP or CCM or PAM or Labor or whatever, UNEP. We need young people involved. I know that's something that's hard for the Caribbean to hear, but I tell you, the largest companies in the world continue to recruit even in hard times. There's a very simple reason for that. They want young, fresh ideas. I mean, just today I was speaking with my daughter, right? And she gave me some ideas on some things that, honestly, I didn't think of. But young people have a way of thinking differently. As we say, thinking out of the what? Box. Out of the box. Here's one for you, really thinking out of the box. I went to Procter & Gamble in 1986, and I said, hey, why are we selling always only in a box? Why not a poly bag? They said, why a poly bag? I said, because it's a little bit glossy. It's strong. You can print on it. You can do all, you can do all kind of things with it. You take up less space. You can compress it easily. They're doing it now. Well, they've been doing it for several years since then. That's what I'm talking about, different and new ideas. 
So, and bring that to your organizations and be bold about it. Let go of that branch. There's somebody below that you don't see who will catch you. I did it many years ago when I left Houston, believe me. We had just done a fantastic carnival, great queen show. We brought up all kinds of dignitaries from St. Kitts and Trinidad and Jamaica. And the gentleman who was running here Jamaica at the time came in, I think it was in 83 or 84, 84, 82? I forgot what year, but we did two years in a row. And for me to leave and go to Houston, you know, it was tough. I mean, I go to Cincinnati. I know, by the way, the bankers had just crushed the oilers. Back then, they were still the oilers. In a snowstorm, it's like, oh my God, am I going to do this? I did it, OK? And I'm, I've survived. It's taken me to Germany twice, Japan once, and I love it. I've been all over the world as a result of this. So let go. Give the young people a chance, please. And open your mind so that success can flow like a river. You see all, all that rain today? I think there's a reason. God blessed you for this great event you're having tonight. Seriously. Wonderful weather. When I landed, it was 95 degrees. I called back home. My wife says, oh, it's 57 degrees. It's beautiful here. OK, so open your minds. Lead. Be disciplined. Persevere. Don't give up. God bless. Keep going because sometimes, as an organization, when you're trying to get people to come together for a purpose, it's it sometimes can be a struggle. So it, your words kind of. Well, as we have been saying all along, forget about the Oscars in LA, forget about what's happening in Madison Square Garden. You know, that fight between De La Hoya and Victor Ruiz ain't got nothing to what's happening at the 28th annual St. Kitts and Nevins Independence Gala. I mentioned earlier today that I might be one of the luckiest human beings on this planet. Put it this way, I'm the luckiest Caribbean Latino Garifuna on the planet because we have two of the finest, St. Kitts and Ketitians and Divisions in the house. We have Coretta on one hand and we have Michelle Burt on the other. You know, uh, sitting there, you may have seen the video already, a lot of accolades, and uh, but I'm not going to say much because we want to find out where the inspiration came out from in putting this organization, what happened in the process, and uh, where do we go from here? Well, Coretta always has great ideas, so Coretta came to me and said that she had a great idea to start an organization, and she wanted my help. So I have a sister um, that also was part of the organization and getting it off the ground, so we had a few meetings. We decided on positions. I was the president. Um, I actually am a supervisor at work right now, so that was a, a proper role for me at the time. Coretta does marketing for a living, so she took on the marketing PR role. And my sister is a secretary at work, or at that time she was secretary, so she took on that role. So from there we just had meetings. We got our foundation going together, wrote down a lot of things as far as um, any additional roles that we needed. And one thing that was essential to us was that we knew we needed our parents involved. And we created an elders board. And she can tell you about the elders board. Well, I mean, Coretta, uh, you know, we've seen you all around. But this is going to be the first time where a lot of us are going to find out more about your leadership skills, your abilities. I mean, we've seen you all around. But tell us briefly about, you know, the, the, the elder book is it? Elders board. The elders board, and you know, again, how did you come around? You know, doing this thing to which now I'm I'm one of your biggest fans. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, well, after I graduated college, I knew I needed to get to know more of my background. I was surrounded by the American background. I'm like, I need to get to know who I am, what I'm about. Because in college, they always say, where are you from? I said, no, I'm from Houston. Like, no, you talk funny. I'm like, yeah, I'm from 
saying it's a nevus, and they're like, what is that? And I have to explain it and all that. So I said, I when I get home, I, I got to get to know more about my culture because I couldn't really get into depth about St. Kitts and Nevis because I was born here. And I just felt it was time for us to get to know more about our past, more about our present and our future. And I knew that, yeah, we're getting older, but what are we going to do when our parents, God forbid, or when it ever happens, when they go, what are we going to do when they die? We don't know our history. We don't know our culture. We don't know who we are. So I felt it was, it was time for us to get to know that. We know about Trinidad, we know about Jamaica, we know about all the other islands, but what about St. Kitts, what about Nevis? All these other cultures, all these other people from different countries don't know St. Kitts and Nevis. They always ask me, where is that? Is that in Jamaica? Where is, somebody asked me, was that in, the, by the Philippines? So I'm just like, come on, I mean, are you serious? So we had the idea and I presented it to my cousin and we just went with it. We just wanted St. Kitts and Nevis to be recognized in Houston more prominently, just like Tr Jamaica, just like Trinidad, just like Barbados. We wanted that recognition too because without St. Kitts, honestly, historically, the Caribbean wouldn't be the Caribbean, and I think the people need to know that. I have to be real. You know, I'm tired of people putting St. Kitts and Nevis down because we're this small island, this little small, two little islands. I know we're not that big, 100 and what, 101 square foot, square feet, with both countries together. Yeah. So a square miles, 101 square miles, but we had a big impact in the Caribbean. So people need to know that. Yes, you did. And, you know, I can attest because we were talking off camera about the history of St. Kitts and the people that lived in St. Kitts. The, the uh, keynote speaker, you know, went a little bit into the, uh, into the details and all that stuff. How do you guys feel not just having members of the Caribbean, but, you know, we have Dominicans here and I've seen some other people in here. How do you feel that, you know, the vision and all of the things you guys wrote down a few years ago is now coming to fruition, St. Kitts in Houston is becoming well-known, mainly because what you guys have done. And, of course, you know, the community that's, that's around you that is pushing to have St. Kitts in the forefront when it comes to the issues of the Caribbean the city of Houston. I think that St. Kitts, St. Kitts and Nevis is really making a name for itself. And I think that being, being that there are Jamaicans, Trinis, Bayesians, um, D Dominicans here, that just shows that the Caribbean is a one love organization, just as the magazine always talks about. And I think that um, we support, or I know Coretta's dad is very, very supportive at, of the other organizations, the island um, independence parties that they have. So I think that that just shows that there, we give back and forth to one another and that we should support one another and that we're not just St. Kitts and Nevis. We have, we have to work together or we'll, we won't have the presence that we need to show that Caribbean people are people of Houston, Texas, and we want to we wanna contribute and we want to be major players. You know, and you mentioned that, you know, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, the Caribbean would not be without St. Kitts and Nevis. You know, how Houston could be without St. Kitts and Nevis going forward? That's a good question. Um, what, what, what's that saying? We small but we tall or what? So, uh, the 80 20 rule. You know, sometimes, you know, to do something, you got this whole group of people that's going to take that 20% to do it. I think because of our history, because we're such a small island that we know we have, we need to kind of. I don't want to say prove ourselves, but we want to show that we can contribute to the Caribbean community too. And I'm very happy that there are all kinds of different people from different countries here because it kind of shows that this, we're starting to be recognized and that we're all coming together and supporting each other. And that was, that was the purpose from the beginning. Well, ladies and gentlemen, not only am I the luckiest man on the planet, but I learned a lot of things today about St. Kitts. And I'll be very honest, you know, I learned a lot of things about St. Kitts because you rarely hear about St. Kitts, but if you're into history, you know what St. Kitts is all about. You know what tremendous contributions St. Kitts has done, not only to the Caribbean, but we heard here, to major corporations and to society and all that good stuff. So, you know, make sure that you visit the web page, the Facebook page of the organizations, get involved, volunteer, let them know you around, you know, how do we get in touch with you guys, with your organization, uh, any events you're going to be doing any, anytime soon? Well, the, the organization email address is Ghana, S-K-N-A-H, um, S-K-N-A Houston at gmail.com. 
and there's also a Facebook page. Yeah, and all we are in the process of planning an event. We're going to have one of our ambassadors from St. Kitts and Nevis to come. Her name is um, Miss Jackie. Uh, I, I apologize, but we're still in the process of getting that together, and that might be sometime next month or maybe November. And we're going to try to have all our Houston dignitaries, such as Sheila Lee Jackson and the mayor and all the other people, try to come and you know talk to her and talk more about St. Kitts and Nevis and let them know you know what's going on down there, as well as how Houston can help you know support the Caribbean as well. Well, my grandfather always says, in order to be big, you got to start very small. Right now, Houston is on the right path because we're following what these young women are doing to our culture here in the city of Houston. Back to you guys. I'm having fun. I'm sorry for you, but you got to make sure that when you're here, the next time the St. Kitts is having an event, there has to be a lot of us here, you know, but I'm enjoying it now, being the luckiest man on the planet. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry Mayweather. But the next time somebody's gonna beat you, it's gonna be somebody from St. Kitts, brother. Put it that oh, way. Oh no, no, no! We're gonna we're gonna get the gold, London 2012 Olympics. Come on, Kim Collins and the team. Four by what? Four by 100? Four hundred by one? Whatever that is. I don't care. Win those two events. Bring the gold. Bring the gold home to St. Kitts and Nevis. Okay? All right. I, I would attest to La Buga, but you know that's not the conversation. <laughs> Back to you guys up in the studio, and we're here. At the heart of Houston, St. Kitts and St. Kitts St. Nevis, Gala, you know, a lot of people, a lot of iconic legends that you're gonna keep hearing as the future comes near. Back to you guys. Well, good night, everybody. This is Anna Valenzuela. Um, continue to enjoy and have a great time at the St. Kitts and Nevis um, Independence Celebration. And with me right now, we have Mr. Danny Warner. Dennis Warner. Dennis Warner. And he's gonna come, let us know a little bit how, about how he feels being here today. And what does it mean for him being, um, celebrating the independence of, of St. Kitts and Nevis. So, Mr. Warner. Uh, well, for me, it's, it, it's a grand thing. Um, We've been trying to get to this stage for a long, long, long time. Uh, we, today we're celebrating the independence of St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, and it's more than just a celebration of itself. It's, it's a celebration of people enjoying their freedom. Also today, we're celebrating our a body of petition who eventually kind of break a barrier, a barrier in such that uh, for the first time, Sinkis and Nevis came together and orchestrated this event. And it is well attended. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. And that's excellent. One of the things that it's very, very well to, to recognize is the attendance. Yes. Is the recognition that people from um, San Kids, San Kitts and Nevis are coming out here to celebrate to show their, how proud they are of their independence. 28 years. Yes. That is awesome. Now, Mr. Warner, let me know some of the activities and things that the um, San Kitts and Nevis community is having around Houston. What are the plans? What are some of the things to continue celebrating and making the Caribbean heritage proud here in the Houston area? Well, I think, um, and I would say um, a lot of the other islands are doing practically the same thing. Uh, uh, a question like this would be answered would be answered the same for most islands. Uh, I, I, I think we strive on uh, what I should say um, what drives us, especially, is when we go back home to our own country and we see the the lack of, and we're here in a, in a place of abundance, and it's kind of hard for to be in a place of abundance knowing your country is lacking. And that's, that's one of the things that drive us to do these things and wanting to do these things. Uh, I would be selfish in saying it is just think it's alone, but no, it's most of the Caribbean islands here in America uh, that are striving to do the same thing. It's a wonderful feeling and it gives one a sense of purpose. If one is trying to find a purpose, this one of the areas to be in. 
Yes, sir, and I definitely agree with you on that. All Caribbeans, Hispanics, Latins, that's, right. that's what we strive for, right. to make sure that we bring back home a little bit of all of the abundance that we have here in the United States. Now, how do we join? How can we work together to continue to work as a force to bring back home everything that we have here? You know, you asked the question, and it was just the other day, I sense an awakening of a people. I sense an awakening, not of just Caribbean people, but I think these days I'm sensing the awakening of people. People today are looking for an identity. People today are looking for a oneness. People today are looking for a drive. People today are looking for a purpose. There is a, a, a something in the air these days to me where people are saying, look, we want to do something. We need, we, we, we can't afford not to. Too many of us here who is in the land of abundance, we know that we can do a lot to help, especially people outside of America. Yes, sir. Completely agree with you. And that's one of the main goals that we have to have is to work together to be able to bring back home a little bit of everything that we have here. Mr. Warner, thank you very much for, for um, sharing with us some of your thoughts and being here with us today. Well, from here, that's from Houston, we're having fun, we're enjoying the independence of St. Keys and Nevis. We're back to the studio of CAF TV. <laughs> Independence Gala taking place here in the heart of Houston. As you can see, this is not just a local event, it is an international event. And we're glad to be here and be part of this event. Make sure that you come in next year because next year it's going to be bigger and better. As you can see, my man DJ Marshall doing his thing as always. Because this man is the man. And make sure that you contact him because he's the man. Well, I'm going to be back to you guys. I'm getting on the dance floor because a mí me gusta lo que está pasando aquí. Back to you guys. We're back here at the St. Kitts and Nevins Independence Gala, and it has been a very great experience. I'm going to just pass it over to my co-host so she can briefly tell us, you know, how was her experience here today. And uh, we're going to do a little closing uh, because it has been an overwhelming experience learning a little bit of history of St. Kitts and the history that St. Kitts have played. Anna, you know, what do you think and uh, how was your experience? Um, I know there was a little merengue thing going on, but, you know, just tell us briefly, you know, for the viewers who are watching and, you know, for next year. Definitely, Jerry. This has been a wonderful experience. And yes, I was dancing my merengue, um, enjoying the diversity, enjoying the unity, enjoying the wonderful things that I learned today. One of the main things to um, um, portray in here is the common, common that we have in all of the islands. You know, even though we have islands that speak Spanish, islands that speak French, islands that speak Creole, English, Portuguese, we all have one special thing in common. We're all Caribbeans. We all share the food, the music, the background, the heritage, and not only with Caribbean islands, but also with some countries from Latin America. 
you know, that have that Caribbean heritage, that Afro descendant that is very well being celebrated this year. So it has been a wonderful experience. It has been a learning journey for me, for you, for Judith that's here with us, and for everybody that attended this wonderful gala. So next year, it's going to be even better. So don't, don't miss it. Well, as you heard, um, it, it's, it's, it's all about St. Kitts and Nivens today, but what St. Kitts and Nivens reminded us was, you know, it's not about an island, but it's about our culture. Last week I said that it's not about um, the right Caribbean or the wrong Caribbean. It's about one Caribbean, and tonight here, we're here with St. Kitts celebrating an independent celebration that has gone far beyond the 28 years that they're celebrating today, and it goes way back centuries. Well, as your host, I want to thank you all for you know allowing us to spend some time with you today, and for visiting us both here on YouTube and you know I think on Telemundo. <laughs> uh, but thank you very much. We appreciate it. Make sure you continue logging in and checking in with us because we're going to be. We don't know where we're going to be tomorrow. Uh, we might be over in Honduras, we might be over in Santo Domingo, we might be in Puerto Rico, uh, we might be in Jamaica, we might be in Portugal. The fact is that, you know, CAF TV has been, uh, has allowed us to come over and give us, uh, have this experience, and we're very fortunate to share it with you. From here, from, from Houston, from our hearts, thank you once again, and see you guys the next time. We're about to go hit the dance floor. As you can hear, because in the Caribbean, you got to follow the leader. And today, St. Kitts and Nivens is that leader. Back to you guys.